I really wasn't expecting episode six of Call of the Night to be, I guess, this wholesome, <laughs> this really impactful to me, really, really phenomenal episode. The whole first half of it was just so good. I, I actually got emotional watching it, just not really expecting that. I guess I guess that's the cool thing, pulling the rug out from underneath you and really making you feel the anxiety that the character has, which was really fantastic. I Honestly, with the the end of the last episode, my expectation was, oh my gosh, here's Nazana forcing Ko to have to give this random office lady a massage, and it's probably going to get, you know, loot or whatever. But no, it was really, it was really heartfelt. I really wasn't expecting that. But again, really great. And this, the whole second half was fantastic too, because it's really just Nazana getting the taste of jealousy. I think that's a really cool thing is like going forward every time <laughs> Nazana does drink Ko's blood, I'm I'm gonna be searching for some sort of emotion that she's looking for. The the episode five pretty much established that Nazana is trying to make Ko have different emotions, teasing him in different ways, in order to get different tasting blood. She's able to taste and pull in what he's experiencing, and again, with this episode, she was trying to tease him to make him have jealousy, which was again really, really funny. And yes, technically seeing Nazana in I don't know, more clothes but in less clothes. <laughs> It is funny to think that we have this little scene where they're going to a pool and Ko's like, you know, technically she always wears less than a bathing suit most of the time. So I don't know what I'm expecting. But then, of course, we have the aspect of more clothes technically makes it more interesting. It's the the unknown aspect, the drawing your own conclusion idea. And I technically agree with that. But no, anyways, back to the first half of episode six. Absolutely fantastic. Again, kind of opening up with this idea of Ko coming in there being really weird because now he has to actually do this because he claims he's doing it for the money. But it's really cool because it turns the whole situation where he, as he's working on her, eventually she asks, you know, what's your age? Oh, I'm 14. You're 14? Why are you, what are you doing? Oh, I, I skipped out of school. It was boring to me. Getting into how he's basically been living in the night and how the two pretty much start to draw parallels between each other. It's really what it's doing is it trying to really show that this girl, this office lady once had the same mindset as Ko. She remembers back in the day going out at night and enjoying the night. Now it's all about work. It's work all day. Deal with her coworkers, deal with her boss, laugh along with her jokes, even though she doesn't find them funny. And yes, it kind of implies a little bit that she's being harassed a little bit. She doesn't enjoy her work. It's horrible. She is, uh, she, they're working her to death. They keep forcing her to go to these after work parties that she doesn't want to be a part of. She just wants to do her work, go home do her work, go home. She's lost any joy in her life. And again, I, I thought I thought Ko would kind of jump on that a little more and mention the idea of, you know, yeah, I had the same experience at school. I didn't enjoy it. But it really was drawing the parallels and that both of them at some point have experienced or he's experiencing now, she has once experienced that freedom of the night. Being able to walk out in the middle of the street, sing at the top of your lungs and not have to worry about bothering anybody. It's a freedom that she wants to experience and she kind of wants to experience it again. And now Ko in front of her is literally experiencing that in his life. But it finally leads to the point where she's, as he's mentioning the fact that he's now free and he's enjoying time, she, it's almost as if she becomes nostalgic of it and it breaks her. I forgot about those things. And then she starts to break down. And this is where it kind of shift from, oh, cool, they're drawing parallels to, oh, wait, <laughs> we're getting into a pretty touchy subject here. She's done. She can't take it anymore. And then right then phone rings and she snaps back into I gotta get back to work mode. And Ko notices this. It was a really good moment for Ko. Obviously, Ko has always been kind of aloof. He's always been kind of enjoying his time. He's getting away from responsibilities. Now it almost feels like he's putting upon himself responsibility of somebody else. He sees somebody's hurting and he takes action. I'm not gonna let you leave. Like you're literally, <laughs> it was funny because at first it starts out like I can't let her leave otherwise I'm not gonna get paid to pretty much no, I, that's different. This is not what this is about. It's not about the money. It's not about getting Nazana's kiss, which he never technically did, unless they insinuate at the end, but she technically bit him. But no, he doesn't want her to go because he understands that she is hurting and she needs to rest. And so he blocks the door. <laughs> and then we get the we get the reveal that Nazana apparently can go through walls. So yeah, she just pops through the wall, freaks out this lady and says, oh, what's going on? We can't let her go. Okay, that's all I got to do. All right, chuck her. I, <laughs> I don't know what the logic was here, but apparently in... Ko saying, don't let her leave this place and go back to work. Nazana believes, oh, that means I need to chuck her out the window. Open the window. All right, chucking. <laughs> I, I think it really was just trying to kind of jar her a little bit. Like, give her an experience real quick. Show her something that is worth it. And that's that technically the exhilaration that Nazana gave Ko when he first showed up. Letting him experience the night, throwing him out there. 
that was really what she kind of did with this lady. Just chuck her out the window. Let her experience that desire for life. Really fantastic, though. Her flying out there. Really cool visual. Him running down there. Or flying. <laughs> him falling down there. Saying, I'm not going to let you die. It really kind of books in this whole situation with Ko kind of just showing her once again, look, you can do it right now. Like that thing you did once before where you used to be able to walk in the middle of the street, you can do it right now. And it was really cool because it's almost as if he's kind of showing her, look, you can still do it, the, 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 the thing 10, was it 10 or 15 years ago? The thing you did a long time ago because you're an old fart now in anime years because you're like, I don't know, they're, I guess they're implying that she's like 24 or something like that. You're an old fart now, but you can still enjoy life. Like showing her, here, come over here. Stand in the middle of the road. You can still do it. It was like him subtly saying, look, you can still enjoy life. You can still enjoy the things that you once did. And I, I like that it's not, I'm always encouraged whenever a writer really does allow the characters to not find that it's bubbly. It doesn't turn into a thing where the office worker goes, you know what? You're right. I can still do this. I'm quitting my job tomorrow. I'm going to go be an artist like I wanted to be. No, it, it kind of just says, you know, look, I can't do this. I got to get back to work. But it still leaves open that door. Look, when I become a vampire, I will make you a vampire too so you can enjoy the nightlife like I do. Which, yes, Nazana takes completely different. But in that moment, it's like that, that claim, like, look, I can give you an out eventually. I'm going to work hard to achieve this goal that I'm going to do. And eventually, if you don't like what you're doing still, come to me and I can help you find that. I can offer you the thing that I'm trying to seek out as well. It was just a, it was just so good. Like, it was so beautifully done. I love the emotional breakdown she's having. They portrayed that terror that she has. That I like how it's, it's in the middle of the moment that she's really breaking down. Like, she's finally kind of letting loose all of her frustrations and then it's almost as if she's not given a time to breathe afterward. Like, she's she's crying. She's not given that time to breathe, that time to take a nap, a time to get rest and recover for the, the work day. It's immediate, no, get back to work. Like, immediately it's get back to work. And it's, like, almost, it sucks. Like, it, it sucks. Like, that moment you're you're at your wit's end and you feel like you have an opportunity to breathe, but then you can't. It's really not trying to sugarcoat it. I, like I said, I give them respect for that. But as usual, for Call of the Night, <laughs> leading films, some great shots. Just great perspective shots. I love the shot of the street when, he, when she walks out there. The fact that he's still technically barefooted gives a little bit more juvenile nature to it as well. But it's just really well played out. And yeah, Nazana afterwards saying, wow, that was really bold to say that. Oh, well, yeah, I guess I do still need to become a vampire, but I'm, st I'm going to do it. And she's like, no, you're going you're gonna to make her your first offspring. <laughs> You're, you're claiming that she's going to love you. And he's like, well, typically women like me. It's like, whoa, <laughs> boy, he's got some, he's got some guts. He's, he's very confident in himself. But yeah, I already got into it earlier, but yeah, eventually she comes and says, hey, let's find something to do. Sh tell me something we can do. Karaoke, all this other stuff. And then yes, finally, let's go to a pool party. And they go there and yeah, pretty much Nazna trying to push him to be kind of jealous, allowing herself to be, you know, played with by these two guys and try to get her attention and eventually he comes over there and pulls her it was really cool because i i like i like that for once where you have like these two guys that, it's always two guys <laughs> like all these pull parties and stuff it's always two guys that corner some girl and then the main character has to come in and grab their arm and then run off with them every single time it's the same thing but no it was like these guys are cool they're like hey dude don't don't leave your girl out like that i mean come on if she, if she had somebody that's fine but I mean, technically, she was leading on as well. Well, he could have been gone. He could be. He could have left already. So if you guys want to pay for me, that's fine. But it was cute because it, it kind of has him sort of trying to portray what he is feeling at the time. Yeah, it was just too much noise there. I didn't like it. It wasn't comfortable. It's too crowded. I don't like hearing people talk about you. It's not fun. I don't like seeing other people get friendly with you. All those kind of things, is, which, again, triggers into Nazana. Oh, here we go. I got it. I can now taste his jealousy. And that was the obviously the end of it. Plus the the physics. <laughs> she like takes off her collar up here and it's like it's like what? <laughs> it wasn't like they were strapping that down, but you know, whatever. <laughs> A little bit of physics is always good, I guess. But no, fantastic episode. Um really did love it. A lot more again, a lot more heartfelt than I thought it would be. Granted, I feel like with Akita's story, we were kind of doing something similar. And it's this idea of kind of Ko rather than Nazana showing somebody the wonders of the night. Now, granted, with Akira, it was kind of a combination of Nazuna and, and Ko that were technically showing her the wonders of the night. This is really Ko's first time kind of showing somebody else the freedom and everything of the night, which I, again, I'm kind of curious if that'll be something they'll keep doing going forward. 
Ko's sort of becoming Nazuna in a way. He's not a vampire yet, but he is technically becoming her. Like that idea of allowing people to rest. He essentially took on her role right there. You're not going anywhere. You're going to rest, sleep, get the rest you need. You need it. Which is technically what Nazuna has been doing this entire time is giving people rest at the same time getting the blood that she needs. But anyways, really fantastic episode. As usual, Call the Night episode six. Really did enjoy it. Hope you guys enjoyed this impressions. If you did, make sure to hit that like button down below. Comment. Let me know what you thought of the episode. Subscribe to the channel if you've not already. I do news, reviews, first impressions. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. Additionally, if you want to support the channel more, we have a Patreon link, a tips link, and a super thanks button down below. I definitely appreciate everybody that considers, and y'all take care.